Hello everyone, I'm Fiora, and this is Dawn of War Chaos Rising. Now, it is important to note this is a standalone expansion for Dawn of War 2. You don't actually need the first Dawn of War game to play this one, nor do you need it to play Retribution, which I thought was awesome. Also, it's important to note that this is a true expansion, meaning it's not like DLC, it is an actual full-on game by itself. There have been some improvements since the previous Dawn of War. The first thing you will note here as we get to go in. Now, the first thing I have to show you guys that has made this a little annoying for me is uh, there is no option to make this windowed. You can't do it. Even Alt-Enter doesn't work to make this into a windowed application. So, for those who prefer borderless window, it's not available in this one, guys. It's not going to happen for you. Um, you basically, other than that, have all of the graphical options you could stand. And by the way, I have the music score cut off, but it is fantastic. It really, really is fa a fantastic music score. Now that all of this is said, let's actually get into the game. Remember guys, this is by THQ and Relic and uh, Sega are the people who have put, made this game possible. Now you're gonna notice a couple things different here for a start you have a new squad the librarian Jonah Orion he isn't a squad he's a solo character but he is a librarian and yes I just unlocked a trait so wait what is this trait anyway so I, the next thing you will notice is that your character you, you can import your previous game so you your original Dawn of War 2 translates into Dawn of War Chaos Rising. It makes both games have a lot more replayability because you can go through the first game and the second game with a completely different loadout for your commander, Tarkus, Avatus, whoever. You can just change your entire playstyle and play through it again and again. It makes things really interesting. Now, the next thing you will notice is whenever you start a new game and you didn't import, you still get a bunch of shit. And there's this new expendable item section. So let's go over all of this stuff. Um, Demon hammers are now thunder hammer and demon hammer and demon hammers are now available. Uh, a lot of weapons are more common. Lightning claws, for instance, are more common. Uh, dreadnought weapons are more common. Alice Mister Aptus heals to full and receives a temporary burst, but temporary but substantial burst in damage. Cool. That's something else. Uh-huh. That's interesting, Cyrus. Yeah, we do, don't we? Which is silly for Space Marines. But here's something to note. Each of the story elements that are going on... By the way, spoiler warning! Should have said that first, spoiler warning. But each thing going on... These ca characters might have replies to. Thank you. I appreciate it. Now I've got 10 points to distribute real quick, and we want to make you into a very melee happy psyker. So we're going to unlock those traits. So aggressive blows, forms of special attack, close combat. Nice. We also unlocked Conduit. I mean, this is, you know, stuff carries over. Now, for him, I'm going to give him the only piece of armor I have for him because the others are locked. As you can see, you automatically have stuff you can work towards. Now, I can either give him a Force Sword or a Staff. I'm going to give him the Force Sword because I want him to be very, 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 very melee happy. And now he can take on a bolt pistol as well. And then you have other psychic powers that are only available for him. So let's see here. What is empower? Hmm. Let's do Tome of Might. Let's do Tome of Displacement so he can teleport around in addition to his Tome of Wrath. And what is this? Only usable by doing that level 24. It's a new relic. 
But here's the important thing to remember. I need to pick a squad. As we unlock a trait here that I missed. Where did Duel get, did Thule get a trait? Did Cyrus? Oh. Got a trait. My bad. But you also have these expendable items. That have specific effects in addition to the squad that they go to. So. For instance. I want to give him two more strength. Done. I want to give my... I want to give Thaddeus more endurance. Done. It's permanent. And I want to give a substantial amount of experience to my force commander, who just jumped two levels. So, the expendable items become a strategic use thing. For the people that you're going to use the most, you're probably going to want to use them on those people. But it's a new element added to this game. There's also more commander items. And eventually you can get a second commander item slot. Eventually. There is an unlock for that. Let's go ahead and gain this. Force commander instantly. May instantly get regain consciousness. When incapacitated, we we'll do so. He regains health and a brief burst of speed. In addition to the relentless ability. And we are going to just buff my strength all the way through the roof. And make him a very angry commander. Now... This is what I consider kind of nice. It's, it's, it's very well put together. The interface has been improved. The feedback has been improved. Um, I believe that those go for all squads. Whenever you throw something, I'm going to throw these items down the drain, so to speak, because not really terribly useful because they're lower level stuff. And we're currently using an assault cannon instead of dreadnought claws, so... Let's see, he's at 17, he's at 57.99. Let's make sure all of this goes to every squad instead of just one. Yeah. So, the expendable items only go to one squad, but everything else still goes to every one. Now, all of that said, there's a new planet, Aurelia, which is where the first couple missions take place. It's the planet that disappeared and has now come back. And you have some return of some very, very nice characters which we're going to be traveling to Meridian to see. Overall, this is a direct progression from the first part of Dawn of War 2 into the next part. Your entire squad transfers over, the gameplay is a bit more refined, the game itself plays smoother, has less graphical issues. You also have this cooperative campaign capability. I'm currently offline for recording purposes, as many of you can see. So, we uh, it's can't really see that but you can invite somebody to help to help with your campaign and therefore help control your squads now let's talk to governor de rosa commander governor de rosa here Insurgent yes what is it is that so oh that sucks our infrastructure is still crippled from the eldar and tyranid attack duh Vandis rebels know just where to strike to cause the most damage that sounds bad more, raids from orc looters have become endemic we could use any aid you can provide commander well, I guess I should provide some aid. Commander, this insurgency has stretched our loyal forces to the limit. Orc looters have infested the Hablocks outside Angel Gate, and I can spare no troops to stop them. Only you can eliminate these Xenos before they reach Angel Forge. What do orcs have to do with the insurgency? Vandis wants Angel Forge for itself. They are driving the orcs ahead of them in order to weaken the forge's defenses. Ah. If the insurgents take Angel Forge, they will have access to massive weapon stores. So why are we not blowing up House Vandis? How well defended is it? Forces have been diverted to deal with Vandis insurgents. Those guards yeah, she became Governor DeRosa. The defensive gate has been restored. Sorry for the spoiler. That's the truth. If Angel Gate falls, nothing stands between the rebels you can and the forge. Also now see the scar on her head from where she was struck by a tyrannid. My assault marines are ideally suited for this mission, Commander. The invasion left that area a maze of walls and obstacles. Our jump pads will allow us to get across any blockades. So you're given suggestions. You don't have to take the suggestions, but you are given suggestions. Now with that suggestion in mind, I'm going to put Tarkus up. I'm going to get Thaddeus out. I also, quite frankly, prefer Davian Thule when dealing with orcs. Now that's going to require a re-equip, of course, so we're going to check on Cyrus's equipment. Trainer, mend. 
revives incapacitated units at full health. Now, see, these are the these are also unlocked whenever you start getting rid of expendable items. Is a lot of the time you will unlock new traits that are overarching based upon your morality. Morality is a thing in this game. Be prepared to choose the Emperor or Chaos. Your choice. It gives the player a lot more kind of uh, flexibility in how things go. Now I'm going to put that away so as to we can make sure we are carrying our repair tome for the Dreadnought. We're going to check the Dreadnought and see if we can give it anything better. Um, I have a much better assault cannon, so we're going to ditch that one. Um, we also have, you know, Thunder Hammer. I mean, there's a lot of new weapons that are in normal tabletop that are now here for you to use. Um, you got hammers. I mean, there's just all sorts of stuff. It changes up the gameplay and the tactics drastically from the previous games. Now, I want to try to get him to level 20 somehow in order to... Do we have better armor on you? We do. Tark is leveled up. Yay. In order to get the... Uh, and Brimlays can totally skip this part. I don't mind. But in order to get the Dreadnought to 20 right now and to get my other guys up a little bit so that they're not as wimpy, I guess is the term. I'm not going to use no level 15 chainsword. Why would I do that? I'm not even going to use chainswords. I'm going to use ham. I'm going to use fists and, and 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 axes and stuff. Come on, give it a program. Now this is actually better. Like objectively speaking, when you look at them, you can see that th this one, that the blue one, does more damage. It's a higher level. Better, it has suppression resistance, whereas versus knockback resistance, but it also has a chance to slow enemies, and the more damage it does actually completely outweighs the chance for the Kraken Tooth to do more. So we're actually going to ditch the Kraken's Tooth. Actually, can we equip you with Lightning Claws? Because that will be amazing. We can give you a Lightning Claw. Let's do it. Since our Librarian is going melee, we know that we don't want Force Staffs, because they don't Slap. Oh, actually, eh, the sword would be better right now until I can get the force. Actually, yeah, we know we don't want force stabs because they're not as good in terms of melee capability. So we automatically know we can ditch. Oh, I can't dispose of this item. Good to know. Good to know. Level 12 dreadnought armor. I don't even. Terminator armor. I don't even. But see, this can be repaired. And when it's repaired, it becomes something amazing. So we're going to keep it. Anything else we can ditch? Nope. Okay, so we can't get these guys up to level. Damn. Actually, let's give... Oh, is this a... That's a higher level item. Okay. Alright, we're gonna go in. Commander, this insurgency has stretched our loyal forces to and it replays every single time. So that's something nice is that they actually replay now. That's an, that's one of the improvements I talked about. Now the another one of the improvements I talked about is once you've deployed, when you run into loyal Imperial Guard forces, you are fully allowed to use said Imperial Guard forces as though they're your own troops. Now to combat these orc looters, we have gone very heavy melee. As we have the Dreadnought, Thaddeus, my Force Commander is a melee Force Commander, and we have Cyrus to provide us with precision support with a sniper rifle. Now, one thing I don't consider an improvement, and you're about to see it. I will be glad to be done with this place. Surely Angel Forge is worth defending Abitus. Supplies are Worry spread up now. Later, instead of just to kill. instead of just finding supplies that anybody can use for anything, they're now selective. I don't think that was a good improvement. As a matter of fact, there are mods that will restore the previous version oh, of supply. I saw something from the sky. Yeah, you did. It's called us. Bam! Eat a power fist. Well, oh, I got knocked down. 
Oh, but then I just knocked this out of something. Look okay, let's move Cyrus up. Cyrus up? Because what we can use Cyrus for, for those who don't really know or haven't played the previous game, is Cyrus can go invisible. Airborne and deploy, and I want you to spin around and shoot him. Nice shot. Switch you to assault mode. Okay, Thaddeus' squad needs to heal up a little bit. As you can see, they keep their abilities as well from the previous one. We didn't mean to do that. Withdrawal scout marines. I wanted to recharge them. I did not realize that they would actually spawn enemies by doing so. But they keep their abilities from the previous game. And I see a bunker that is a bunker from hell. You see all of that in there? Let's take care of that. We'll carry it out. Shall we? There we go! And that leveled up Thule and Thaddeus. Greenskins and the Havlocks. Use explosives. We already did. Secured. Another thing I don't really agree with anymore is that Space Marine is that your units don't have an innate regeneration capability for their health. They have to actually move back, which makes it very, very hard on your medical supplies, especially when medical supplies are now separate from all other supplies. So we've got more explosives to clear them out with. What is this? A knob. That's cute. Throw it. That's going to take care of that. And then I'm going to come storming in here with my men right behind. So I'm going to jump at this uh, commando and go right into him while you guys deal with them. And then Cyrus drops out. And I need a sniper round. Allow the reinforcements to teleport directly onto Cyrus's location. Okay, we've taken significant damage. We're going to burn that. Thaddeus needs to jump back into the withdrawal. We need you to go back to stealth mode. Actually, you know what? No. Stay in. We're going to try to pull them away from the half block so we can take out that half block that has all those guys in it. With Thule. Who has assault cannon barrage? Mighty strike. And his assault cannon barrage is devastating. All right, shut down and begin repairs. As soon as he's repaired up, we're going to continue moving. Uh, we're actually going to take the time to go out to here and secure this before we worry about eliminating the looters, if possible. You know, make sure we murder them all. Oh, we need to go kill those guys. Thule's back up and running. As you can see, Thule's already starts as a venerated dreadnought. This is like what we would consider like epic level in D&D. You basically go from the regular old level to straight up epic level combat. Now, the old enemies have not necessarily been improved. I mean, some of them are higher level now, but instead they've added new enemies rather than just improving the old ones. So while the old ones have leveled up and become more lethal, the newer enemies, such as the Orc Commando knobs that we've been fighting, have been added. There's also new Eldar enemies. There's a lot of things, excuse me, sorry about that, that have been added to the game since before since, oh, sorry, I decided I need to move my camera because I realized where it was. It's been there for live stream. I apologize. I'm, you know, some people will go, that's not very professional. You know what? I like being real with you folks and talking to you like, I, like I'm a human being. Pull back. We are going to pull back from these commando knobs. And then we're going to re-engage. And Thule, of course, is coming up here with an assault cannon and punching them as well. Oh, 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 God. 
That was just mean. Tactical shift. Tactical shifted up, Cyrus. We're gonna move up here. I'm gonna see if we can cross into Angel Forge territory or not. Now, I, the, one of the problems, by the way, is that a lot of the maps are not completely new maps. They're reuser. They're reused. Actually, Quake. Show them where that is. Knocks everybody down. Just like the... Uh, except for he can just do that whenever he wants instead of it being an activation. Just like Thaddeus can do a merciless strike whenever he wants and it's not an activation. Okay, let's see if we can get over to here. And throw that... On to, oh, four, three, two. Oh, he backed away from it. He got scared. Let's put Cyrus over here. Oh, wow. Wow. That's good intel. That's something I needed to know. Thankfully, Thaddeus has plenty of melt bomb One of the things I do, do notice in comparison to the previous game is that your troops take a second to react. It's kind of like Command and Conquer in that sense. Nothing crosses. We're going to sit at range, actually, with our pistols and our dreadnought. Stay at range. Move back. Turn around. We're going to stay at range and pick these guys apart. I see that thing moving towards Cyrus, so Cyrus is going to withdraw while he can. Get detected, of course, and drop out. And then Cyrus should be able to deliver some shots back. Go to melee. I need a Melta. Come on. There we go. Get in melee. Cyrus's squad withdrawal. That's not good. That's the other thing. The enemy gets some special abilities too. That was a unique attack from the uh, from the uh, def from the death dread. That basically instantly kills whoever he's in melee with. Just they're dead, and it's something you have to deal with. You aren't the only one that's getting upgraded to epic levels in some cases. Some of the enemies are too. That's useful. Let's see if we can tag that without being. Oh, no, we're under shot. We're under shot, and that summon. Throw that. Thule has taken that out. I need you to engage that. Scouts back off. Don't you get in melee with that. I'm going to go after the war truck with a charge. I think he's determined to get my scouts. We have a, we have a melt to throw it. Took care of that problem with my fist. Assault squad, ready to as a uh, as a very very nice nice little video will tell you, I cast fist. All right, let's get reinforced. Let's have Thule repair himself. Um, we also have the backup from Cyrus if we need for right to repair for emergency repair. <laughs> We're going to see if we can get into this area, and if we can... Oh, hello! How are you? Trying some of your commando -y bullshit? Let 
That's what we have to say to your commando bullshit. You are dead. You're right, no green skin should be allowed to live. We are here to exterminate them all. Because we're a loyalist chapter right now. Now there will be decisions during your missions that will determine if you go loyalist or K or if you start to fall to chaos and will actually determine your ending for this part of the of the Dawn of War 2 series. And kind of determines how your force commander goes down in history. Does he go down as a loyalist or does he go down as a traitor? Or does he go down as a renegade? Um, I forget if you if that's all if that's the three options or if it's one, or if there's loyalist or renegade or loyalist or chaos, but basically as you progress through this campaign, you will be making decisions, and I think that's cool. That's something that kind of needed to be added, where more than just my tactical decision of what I'm going to do today matters. Withdrawal. Scouts withdraw to cover. As the codex says, let the melee troops do their job and you guys just put down fire. Alien pitched. But it basically takes where you left off in your last campaign and keeps progressing you forward. Now, the max level in this campaign, I believe, is 30. The max level in the previous campaign is 20. So basically, this like takes kind of the, the term that I would call epic level D&D. &D. Where you had to level 20 and then beyond that was epic and epic goes to about level 30 and then you tend to stop. Because anything past that point is just kind of redonkulous. Okay, we have a war boss and some melee knobs. Can we get a sniper shot? Okay, we need to move around. We're going to change your order to move over to here. And I'm going to bring you guys right up to here. Oh, wait a minute. No. Move a little. No, no, I want you guys right here. I want you a little further forward. Capture strategic asset. We need to bring that building down. There we go. Bring that building down and withdraw. Scouts withdraw. Shit, scouts have been spotted. Everybody in. War cry. Oh, space Marines. This is me lucky day. Merciless oh, strike. Man. Jump away, jump away. Heal. I need you guys to go after him. Cyrus, I need a high powered shot. Take him out, Cyrus. On my mark. Assault cannon. I need another heal because Thaddeus is about to fall. That's one problem I always have with Thaddeus is he's always like just about to fall. Be vigilant on the attack. Shoot him. Oh, you missed. No, you didn't. You hit him. Did that green skin say more, Space Marines? Commander, Governor DeRosa here. We are receiving a distress call from inside the defensive ring. We are under heavy fire from insurgent forces inside the perimeter. Heavy casualties. Well. I guess we have to get in here. Oh, what in the hell is that? There's a command console inside the perimeter which you can use to lower the gate, Commander. Jump packs should allow you to reach it. Commander, that position is exposed. Then we break the gate down. Take the Capture that. by surprise. With Angel Gate shattered and the defenders dead, who will hold the forge the next time? We will shut it down the hard way. Because that is what we brought all these jump packs for, by God. Thule, I need you ready to go in as soon as that's down. Start shutting it off. I'm going down the hard way. Point of strategic interest. Claim that sanctified. Uh, here are our brothers. Precisely on schedule. Have we 
claim that strategic resource yet? Claim it quickly. Thule! Charge! Cyrus. Move. Crush them with a fury like none other. And that decision on whether or not you break the gate or jump over is the strategic decision I'm talking about. Whether you go one way or the other for the story purposes. Now these guardsmen, for some reason, are equipped not with las guns, but with stubbers. With plain old ballistic guns. Which is unusual. But I think that's like a lore thing with Meridian, that their guardsmen are actually equipped with regular old ballistic weapons. More powerful than the las gun, but harder to resupply and maintain. Basically not as reliable. We need to capture that point. Because we capture this. Go. It is done. Move on. Assault Marines here. Aerial assault. Go. I need a assault cannon barrage when you can right on them. No mercy. Cyrus here. Under fire. He's just grabbing those guys and just murdering them. I guess some blighted power armor. That's not very good power armor though. Deliver an assault cannon barrage. Oh, you can't. Because they're blocked line of sight. Okay, well, get over here and help. Finish these guys off. Oh, God! Move. Actually, I'm curious what this is up here before we go after those guys, because that's a yellow dot. And I want to see what's up here. You never know, there may be more things to slay. And we don't have a time limit or anything right now. I know there's guardsmen dying, but we'll get to them. Okay, it's a guardsman post. They are allies. So we're going to get in here. Assault squad, ready to deploy. Jump to that position. Yeah, yeah. Something about my connection being lost to the Steam server. So good to see you all again, Blood Rays. And it is Elephas. I remember well our sparring on Christ. Yeah, I know. Quit telling me that. I don't care. I'll we'll figure out what's wrong with the internet later. He's anxious to see him again. Oh, shit. Hit them hard, hit them fast. We are coming out of stealth. I'm going to eliminate him. Go. Throw the melt up. That thing's still up. I know that I am not able to connect to the steam server right now. Please. Stop telling me that! I don't care! Something is wrong with Steam, not with my internet right now, and I know that for a fact. Oh shit, he tore up my goddamn scout marines. Merciless strike? Not quite sure what just happened there. Prepare him. Take this thing down. Them. 
bring it down. Ah! Oh, <laughs> well, that worked out wonderfully. Your orders. Retreat. You are beat to nothing. Retreat. The insurgents are in full retreat. You have more Plus one than an insurgency on your hands, Governor DeRosa. This is a full-fledged heresy. Full-fledged heresy. That sounds terrible. And I gained a corruption Shield point. Which they're now going to explain the corruption to us. Melt a gun. Yay, and you know, you still have your resilience, your speed, and your fury that determine bonus XP and additional deployments for the day. Which, yes, you will be working against the time limit. Uh, that is negative armor rating. Corrupting item. Teleporter pack. And a blighted bolter. So you must deal with corruption issues. This is very grave news. We cannot allow the forces of chaos to overrun our recruiting Obviously worlds. not. The traitor legions must be based on planet Aurelia. So this is the last thing I wanted to show Return you guys after he shuts up. Hunt them down. Yeah, I've played this game for, for over a hundred hours, but the achievement is actually for the fact that I've never actually played it once it got moved to Steam. So, as you can see, here is the ordo of things, so to speak. Corruption status. Piercing cry replaces battle cry. Gaining the bloodlust trait will remove this trait. Bloodlust. And as you can see, you get over here to basically full corruption and all your squads have it. Yeah, and it's the individual. I fear the traitor's foul warp energies may have affected Really now. Affected us how, librarian? The corrupting influence of chaos is a powerful thing. Even the briefest encounter can stain the soul. We are no traitors. Perhaps not, Cyrus. But corruption can be subtle. Each step along the path may seem insignificant. But together, they lead into darkness. When facing the minions of the warp, no decision is without consequence. I see. And every squad that was there gets corruption. But those that weren't don't have any. So it becomes very strategic sometimes for you on whether or not you gain this corruption. And the corruption abilities are incredibly powerful. However... They all come at a cost, as you would expect. So it becomes up to you if you want to go down that route. But that is everything I wanted to show you guys. Now, how do I feel about this game as a whole? Well, I like the second Dawn of War. I'm just going to say that flat out. I really, truly did like the second Dawn of War in every way, shape, and form. However, um, this game is not without its issues. You have the guilty pleasure of, do I go down the chaos route or not? Which to me gets annoying, because there are times that I really don't care. I just want to win. I don't care how we win, I would just like to win. And then there are times where I gotta say that I get annoyed because my decision is based on strategy rather than corruption or, or purity and therefore I end up with corruption points that I didn't want. So that's what I have to say. Um, the corruption purity system was a nice add-on but I don't think it's executed very well. However, other than that, taking the game to epic level is obviously the next logical conclusion that should have been made without question. And that is what makes the game shine. So, there you have it. My full opinion and review of Chaos Rising. This is what you get when you purchase this game. No, you don't actually have to purchase the previous games, but you will be missing a huge chunk of story should you not. And also, on top of that, you will be you'll be losing some of the replayability value 
of the previous games because you can replay through the previous game now and carry your troops over from the last game which is a huge huge thing that you have to factor in if you want to really really consider the entire bundle now retribution is different and we're going to be reviewing it shortly and i think retribution kind of falls short but in the meantime from my house to yours this is fiora officially signing out for right now and i will hopefully i'll see you in blitzkrieg later this week bye bye everyone